Good morning, everybody. January 16th, uh, 2022, day 14 of 21 days of prayer and fasting. One week left. Man, we're beginning the final week. And so congratulations for making it this more, this this far. Good morning, Mr. Marvin. I started to say far and Marvin at the same time. Good morning, uh, Miss Kathy. Good to see you guys there. Alex Austin, I'm sure you're there as well. Miss Carrie, um, my lovely wife, as always. Um, good morning, Cornets. Uh, glad to have you guys with us. Hey, for all of you that are coming on, Dr. Joel, good to see you this morning. Uh, Miss Beth, love you to death um, and uh, praying for you. But uh, as you're coming on this morning, I always remind everybody, if there's anybody new and you need a journal, because you will hear me refer to it, uh, we have the journals available on our website, cotlakes.com. And uh, there's a resources tab down from that. A little box will pop up. It says 21 days of prayer and fasting. On that page, a couple different things, uh, three actually. One is the journal for adults. There's a journal for kids. Good morning, Miss Adelia. And then also there is uh, recordings of all of these morning prayers. Um, it's laid out. You can click on it. It goes right to that particular day. So if for some reason you need that or you want to share something with somebody, uh, then that is fantastic. For those of you who are coming to church this morning, uh, let me just uh, remind you if you have not seen or if you did not watch the news or it's not popping up on your phone, we've got a little bit of, of uh, crazy weather this morning. So for all of our prime timers who go to ABF, that's prime time for weather this morning. So uh, just dress accordingly, uh, be careful accordingly, maybe bring you a rain jacket, umbrella. Our dream team parking guys are on top of it. Ryan hit me up last night and said, Pastor Mike, we'll have ponchos and umbrellas trying to help people in the parking lot this morning. So I just wanted to prep you now. So check the weather um, and dress accordingly for church this morning. All right, well, here we are, headed into the final week, right? Final seven days. And um, I'm believing <clears throat> that God is doing a work in you. Some of you see it. Uh, some of you are still standing firm. And I, I want you to know that I'm praying for you today that God would give you the, the power to stand firm. Uh, God gave you two different features, check this out, to keep foreign objects out of your eye. Okay, let's talk about the eye today. If, if there's anything that makes me go, there has to be a God. It's just the function of the eye, right? Uh, but there's two things that, that two uh, particular defense mechanisms, if you will, that, that your eye have. One is the eyelid, and the other is the sclera. The eyelid is the outer protection. That's kind of the obvious that we close when harmful objects are coming. But the sclera, which is the white of your eyes, protects the eyes from unseen items that try to kind of assault your eye, like uh, pollen and dust and tiny particles that create discomfort or even severe damage to your eyes, right? In the spiritual sense, the eyelid would be wisdom for issues you encounter each day. Whereas the sclera would represent discernment. I want you to, to, to think those, those, those through this morning. Wisdom and discernment. Let me read you uh, this key scripture that's in your journal there. Proverbs 5, 1 and 2. My son, pay attention to my wisdom. Listen carefully to my wise counsel. Then you will show discernment. And your lips will express what you have learned. Now, let me say this to you, and, I, and, and this is obvious to all of us that have been alive more than a day. Uh, not every challenge that you face will be seen with the naked eye. Uh, many times the challenges are felt or sensed. Do you know what I mean by that? Um, and that's why it's critical that you have a prayer time and, and you spend time in God's word. Your spiritual sensitivity will give you a no in your spirit when everyone else is, is only saying yes. Uh, your spiritual sensitivity or discernment is what will cause you to see truth in a situation where your physical eye sees the exact opposite. We are such feeling people, if, we, if we're really honest with ourselves. Uh, we are manipulated and controlled by the flesh. Uh, we go to church if we feel like it. We tithe if we feel like it. We obey God if we feel like it. We pray if we feel like it. But God is saying this, I believe. Relationship with me goes beyond your emotions. You need to be, an, you need to be obedient 
beyond your feelings and beyond what your flesh cries out for. Paul said it this way um, to the to the Philippians in Philippians 1 and 9. And I pray this, that your love will keep on growing in knowledge and every kind of discernment so that you can approve the things that are superior and can be pure and blameless in the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness. Man, the scriptures are full of passages that talk about the importance of wisdom and discernment especially in the book of Proverbs. But uh, let me read you another passage. This one happens to be out of 1 Corinthians 2. Listen to this. Now we have received not the spirit of this world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. What a powerful description on the need for godly wisdom and discernment. Uh, Spiritual growth, listen to me, is not an option if you are to recognize the hand of God in your life and on your life. And so ask God to open your eyes, to show you any compromise in your life, to stand firm, to say, God, I'm standing for what's right. Take a firm stand. Stand stand for what's right this year. Uh, As we're tithing and we're starting a new year, where is it that, you know what, I just need to draw a line in the sand, right? The, the Bible says in Psalm 1, 1, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, nor stands with sinners. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to stand with people who do wicked things and who are immoral and only care about their comfort and physical desires. So stand for principle, stand for truth. Um, give you a great example. Next Sunday is uh, January 23rd. Uh, we will be standing for something in, in our church. It is uh, Sanctity of Human Life Sunday. So some of you remember the baby bottles that we've done in the past for the Christian Care Center that takes care of um, especially single moms who have become pregnant uh, to help them with their unborn child and to see that unborn child come to and allow that life to be. So next Sunday, uh, we're going to take a stand for the unborn. Um, let me say this to you. Know why you believe what you believe. Can I challenge you to stop doing something? Can I challenge you to stop taking a stand without the knowledge behind it to back up what you're saying? Can can I challenge you from now on that if you cannot scripturally back it up, maybe you should be careful about the stand that you take Uh, all too often because we're feelers, because we're feelers. We'll say something like, well, the Bible says blah, 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 blah. And if we really looked it up, it was Uncle Joe who said that. It actually doesn't line up scripturally. And, and, and so in this new year, we're starting off this year and say, God, um, we're, we're giving you the first of our year. We want to know you deeper. Um, I, I just want to challenge you because we are we only have one week left. And if there's one thing that I hear every time we do 21 days, uh, there are a handful of people that will say to me, Oh man, I wish you just could keep doing this. Like I'm getting so much out of it. But let me say this to you. What is your plan to continue? What what, what are you going to do? Uh, what needs to change um, in your everyday, in your week to week life that you commit to growth beyond this? You know, it's 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 nice to be able to jump on and probably some of you are just laid back in bed with some coffee, holding your phone. Um, and and getting this scenario, but I want to challenge you. You got one week. What does it look like for you to to, to take a new step to go after wisdom and discernment, to to go after God in a new way, to to commit to reading his word, to commit to prayer time? Because I was was thinking it through, and I thought, you know, you gain wisdom when you read his word. You You gain discernment when you develop your prayer life. And, and, and so what does that look like for you um, heading into this last week as, as we are finishing up hearing from God and pushing that? What's going to be new in 2022 
to bring wisdom and discernment into your life in, in, in a deeper way. So I'm, I'm going to leave you with that, let you process that this morning, ask God to speak to you. What covenant will you make with God um, to, to make 2022? I, I said it, uh, I think I said it last week, I'll say it again. 2022 has all the potential in the world to be the best year of your life if it is the best year of your life spiritually. All right, let me pray for you and um, and let you get on with the journal this morning. Father, bless today those who are fasting and praying uh, with the power to stand firm and a thirst to know you and your thoughts and your ways better. And so God, give us uh, a heart to go after your wisdom and your discernment that, that we might know better what you want, who you are, who we are, and what your story is. And so, uh, God, I pray a blessing over everybody who's watching this morning and their diligence to be a part of this 21 days of prayer. Would you give them answers? Would you give them understanding of the things they're seeking? And just ask it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Uh, love you all. I'll see you tomorrow morning. For those of you who are coming to church today, don't forget about the weather. Uh, be careful coming in. Uh, but we will all brave uh, the torrential rain and, uh, and worship the Lord together. I'll see you guys at 10 o'clock. Love you.